Welcome to the first tutorial in the Backbox course or the penetration testing with Backbox course. In this tutorial, we're gonna give an introduction about Backbox, inspect the general characteristics, and then we're gonna switch to the actual virtual machine and see the uh, various different tools that come pre built or pre installed in ba into Backbox. So it's very good to know, guys, that Backbox Linux is a um, young project designed for pen testing, vulnerability assessment, and management. Now, actually, the key focus here in Backbox is to provide uh, a platform to conduct independent security testing, which you can actually customize with increased performance and stability. It's actually built for performance and speed. So let's go over the uh, general characteristics of the Backbox Linux. The first thing. It's very good to know that it's built on Ubuntu distribution. So it's a Ubuntu distribution. If you actually work with Ubuntu before, if you have worked with Ubuntu or you worked with um, Debian, it's going to be very easy for you to work with Backbox. Next thing is actually an open source with a repository that's constantly updated. There are always updates. It's actually a supported system and the packaging or the package manager always gets updated so that you don't worry about um, the tools getting out of date or getting obsolete. And the next thing is actually GUI minimal. As you will see now, as you will see later in the video, the graphical user interface of Backbox is actually minimal and it's not that heavy. Next thing to know guys is this fast and easy to use and designed for anonymity. There is a separate section or feature in Backbox which actually um, designed for those who like to browse in complete anonymity using Tor and other circuits. You can find this in Backbox as well. It supports full disk encryption. When you first install Backbox, as we will see in the next video, how to install, download and install Backbox, it asks you if you want to fully encrypt your disk. Also, as we said earlier, it's built for a security assessment and penetration testing with the built-in tools. It comes with built-in tools in various categories in penetration testing that help you if you are engaging in a pen testing or security analysis. So that's one check mark. It's also free and can be downloaded and used either as a bootable standalone system or a virtual machine. In this course, we're gonna use Backbox in a virtual machine or as a virtual machine. You can actually download the ISO image of Backbox and use it as a standalone system by creating a bootable USB. We're not going to cover this in this course, we're going to cover the virtual machine. Since most people use virtual machine when they want to run um, a guest OS, it's actually the preferred option. And lastly, Backbox tools, as you can see, the categories are range from web application analysis, network analysis, stress testing, forensics, exploitation, and reporting. Okay, so what do we need to do in order to run Backbox? The first thing, guys, we need 32-bit or 64-bit processor. If your processor is Core i, say, 3, or Core i9, say, right, even if it is quad-core, these are the right specs, but at least it got to be 64 or 32-bit. So either works. Most of the computers these days are either 32 or 64. Now comes the memory. So we need 512 megabytes for Backbox. It's very, actually, as you can see, it doesn't consume too much resources. So if you have a computer that runs on eight gigabytes of memory, that's the minimum recommended these days. As you know, if you are running Windows 10 or even Windows 11, you need actually at least eight gigabytes of memory. So you got to allocate 512 megabytes of these when you first create your virtual machine. Okay, the space 4.4 gigabyte of disk space. Also, it's not that much. Most of the systems these days, they come with one terabyte of disk space. So allocating that amount of memory, you can actually, let me tell you, this is, these are the minimum requirements. So if you have the chance to give the an installation or the system more resources, it's gonna be easier and more flexible for you to work with Backbox. Of course, 4.4 GB are actually the minimum disk space, but you might need more as you install more tools, as you update the system with more updates. So it's recommended, guys, to have or to allocate for Backbox around, let's say, 
at least 6 GB if you want to use it continuously. If you're using it for one time, two times, one time a month, 4.4 is actually enough. Okay, now there are certain resources that are good to know if you browse to these URLs first. We have the wiki. The wiki page of Backbox contains a hierarchical list of pages where you have to or where you got to actually explore how to work with Backbox. Also, we have got the forum. If got if I got a question to ask, you can actually post it in the forum and have got the blog where you browse the different uh, news and updates from the Backbox. Okay. So let's now switch to Backbox and see the organization of the tools in there. All right, so now let's log in. Okay, so this is what we see when we first log in. Now let's explore the tools that come uninstalled in Backbox. So we go to the upper left here, we click on the icon and we go to auditing. And the other thing here, we see the organization of tools. So we have got information gathering, assessment, vulnerability assessment, exploitation all the way to wired analysis. And we, lastly, we got some miscellaneous tools, HPing3, these are for, you know, scanning. So let's go over the categories one by one and explain the tools included in each category. The first thing, as we can see, we have the information gathering. So information gathering, as you know, is the first step in the penetration testing lifecycle. It's also about collecting information on target systems. Um, the information can be very useful to further your attack or your testing in the during your penetration testing. So without the information gathering, or without this step, without the tools in this category, it will be actually quite difficult and hard to assess any system. How can we assess systems if we don't know anything about them? We need information. That's why we resort to information gathering. So let's go over the subcategories under information gathering. We have network and web. So under network, we have got several tools, the same with web. So what's RPSCAN? Now RPSCAN is actually a command line utility. All of these are command line utilities, judging by the icon here, right? This is a command line utility. Now RPSCAN designed for system discovery and fingerprinting. It sends RP requests to specified IP addresses and waits for response. Based on the response, it determines if the host is live or not. Also, we've got uh, IKE scan, mass scan, MBT scan. Now, MBT scan here, it's an application that sends, actually scans and gets information about IP networks uh, to display and get BIOS information. Nmap, I guess you know what's Nmap, the network mapper, the popular tool used to enumerate and discover live hosts on a network. It's not just only designed to discover live hosts. It's actually used for enumerating. You can actually use Nmap to discover open ports, running services, and their versions. Sometimes you can use Nmap as a vulnerability scanner thanks to the Nmap scripting engine. Okay, DRP or the directory search. These two tools are actually the same right? But sometimes you can experience different results using both tools. So DRP and the directory search are actually tools designed to enumerate websites. The purpose is to reveal hidden directories and hidden files. Uh, NOC PY here, or NOC, most known as NOC, not PY, not NOC PY. It's actually a Python script designed to enumerate subdomains on a target domain through a word list. Same with DRP and DR search. You have to supply with the word list in order to run it correctly. Now, what's web? What's web is a tool that recognizes web technologies. It can tell you what is the framework or the platform a website is running on or the website it's using, including content management systems, blogging platforms, static analytics packages, you know, JavaScript libraries, web servers. It's actually designed to tell you what technology a certain website is using. Okay, so this is for information gathering. Now, let's move to the vulnerability assessment category here. So vulnerability assessment, as you know, once we gather information about the target in the first step, next step now is to analyze the information we have just gathered and to evaluate it. Vulnerability assessment is actually a process to identify the vulnerabilities present in the system. 
And don't forget, we have to prioritize these vulnerabilities. Let's go over the tools under this category. So we have web application, web application analysis, we have Nikto, we have Wapiti, and we have Zap. Now, Nikto is a web server scanner, the first one. Command line tool that scans web servers. It tests web servers for dangerous files, CGIs, outdated server software, and other problems. It got actually a list of plugins that can be used to supplement the scan results. So it scans web servers for vulnerabilities. Based on the database of signatures, don't forget this. WAPT, the same. Zap. Um, Zap is a graphical web application scanner. It's not a command line tool. Uh, it's used actually to also scan web servers or application for vulnerabilities. Alrighty then. So, vulnerability assessment done. Exploitation now. Now the exploitation actually, let's, before going through the subcategories here, let's define what's exploitation. So exploitation is the process where the weakness or the vulnerability we have found in the previous step during the vulnerability assessment is used to actually take advantage and penetrate the system. So this can be done through the usage of a public exploit, public exploit, a ready-made exploit, or in advanced testing, you may need to create the exploit yourself. So now, most of the time, the exploit actually is automated script designed to perform a malicious attack on a target system. So let's go over the first category first under the exploitation, which is database. Now, SQL map. SQL map is automated tool to detect SQL vulnerabilities and exploit it. So it doesn't only detect, it exploits SQL vulnerabilities. Okay, on now the network. So we have MSF Console. MSF Console is the popular tool or the popular framework uh, used to, as a general, you know, as its framework actually to perform exploitation, not only for databases, by the way, everything. Okay, then let's talk about now the next category, the privileged escalation. So we have got three subcategories password sniffing, spoofing. Passwords, sniffing, and spoofing. Before going over these categories, let's define privileged escalation. Privileged escalation is an advanced step in the penetration testing lifecycle, which occurs after you gain access to the system, and it happens that you want to escalate from uh, just a regular user to the administrator or the root file system. So privileged escalation occurs when we have already gained access to the system, but with, as I told you, with low privileges, normally with a user that has limited access or limited privileges on the system. It can also be, uh, it can also be that we have legitimate access, but not enough to make effective changes on the system, including running certain commands, exfiltrating files. So we will need to have complete access. We will need to escalate or elevate the privileges. By gaining access to another account with higher privileges, most of the time it is root account. Let's go over these tools now. So we have under the password, local, and we have remote, sniffing, and also we've got spoofing. Starting with Hashcat. Hashcat actually is a very powerful tool used for cracking hashes. It's incredibly the fastest CPU based. It depends on your CPU resources. So if you are low on CPU, Hashcat won't be that much effective. But in general, it can be used to crack hashes or it can be used as a password recovery tool. You need to supply Hashcat with a word list, by the way. Next one, NetSAM password recovery tool. It's actually a tool used for resetting or blanking local passwords in Windows systems. So if you have got SAM hashes, you can actually use this tool to reset the password or make it blank. Okay, crunch. Crunch is not a password cracker. It's rather word list generator where you can specify a standard character set. It's used if you've got information about your target, such as how many characters they use in their password. You can actually use crunch to generate a password based on certain policies, such as the password length or certain pattern in the password. Fcrack zip is password cracker used for uh, zip files or uh, cracked or zip archives. Okay, John. John, a very popular tool named as John the Ripper. It's also password cracking software of crack 
Microsoft Windows password cracker. This one as actually is not a command line. It's a GUI based and it is a Windows password cracker based on rainbow tables. It doesn't need word list. It's actually based on rainbow tables. PDF crack as the name suggests, it's used to crack PDF files, protected PDF files. Okay, these are local password crackers. So it doesn't need uh, you to connect to a network. You just have to have word list and the file hash or the hash itself, then you can crack it. Let's go over the password cracking in the network where you got to interact with the targets. So we have Medusa, Potato, and Hydra. Now Medusa is actually a fast tool, a modular, used to brute force various internet protocols such as HTTP, SSH, and FTP. So most of the time, if you've got web page on the internet or a login form, if you have got FTP server or SSH server where you want to crack the username and password, you can use Medusa. Also, you can use John the Ripper, by the way, in the local part. Okay then, so Potato X Hydra. Now, Xhydra is the GUI version of Hydra. It's actually a login cracker that can attack protocols such as, uh, much like Medusa. These protocols can be Telnet, FTP, HTTP, HTTPS, LDAP, SMB, MySQL, and so on and so forth. Okay, now we talked about password crackers. Let's talk about sniffing category now. So the first one is sniffing is the DriftNet. DriftNet is an application that listens to network traffic and gives you or picks out certain streams from the traffic. Most of the time we use DriftNet actually guys to sniff what's happening on the network or to analyze what's happening on the network. This is a DriftNet. Now DSniff. DSniff also a traffic sniffer analyzes and parses different application protocols TCP, UDP, HTTP, FTP by extracting relevant information. EtherCab. EtherCab is a GUI tool also used for sniffing. Let me call it a suit. It's actually a comprehensive suit for MITM attacks or man in the middle attacks. It's actually GUI, uh, it has a GUI, friendly GUI interface and supports passive and active you know, dissection of traffic. MITM proxy, SSL sniff. Oh, and grep. Grep for network traffic. This one can also be set as network packet analyzer, SSL sniff for sniffing for um, SSL traffic. We have got also TCP dump. TCP dump and Wireshark are actually similar, but Wireshark is a GUI and TCP dump is actually a command line. They are used to analyze network traffic and to sniff what's happening on the network for further analysis. Okay, then now we talked about privileged escalation. Okay, so maintaining access. What do we have under this category? We have web factors and tunneling. So what is maintaining access? Now, after you have escalated the privileges in this step and you become the root account or the administrator in, the, in case the system was Windows, you need to maintain your access. You need to create a way where you can get back to the system whenever you want. So maintaining access is about setting up an environment that will allow you to access the system again without repeating the tasks that we have actually done before. Gathering information, environmental assessment, no. We've got only to put some something in the system that will enable us to get back to it. So most of the time it's actually backdoor or tunneling. So under back, we have web backdoor, we have Weebly, and we have under tunneling we have CryptCat, IOD, Blockchain Chains, P-Tunnel. So CryptCat, this one, I don't think we will we'll use it much. Iodine. Now, Iodine is a free, actually free tool uh, used for tunneling to forward IPv4 traffic through DNS servers. Also, we've got proxy chains and ptunnel. Ptunnel is kind of application allows you to reliably tunnel TCP connections to a remote host using ICMP echo request and reply packets. Most of these tools are featured with the same objective, which is tunneling traffic. Now, Web Backdoors Weebly is a steel PHP web shell that you can actually upload on the target. Once you get access, you can get back to the target and interact with it using this PHP Backdoor. Okay. Maintaining access. Reverse engineering. Okay. Now, reverse engineering is 
Not all the time we use this during a pen testing life cycle. Okay, now let's talk about reverse engineering. Now, reverse engineering isn't always a compulsory step in the pen testing life cycle. Reverse engineering itself is the process of analyzing a binary itself and detecting or finding out what is the actual and real behavior of that binary, what it does, what it's actually doing. Reverse engineering is heavily used by malware analysts, right? They use reverse engineering to reveal the source code of the malware in order to analyze and find out what it actually does. So in the reverse engineering menu here, it contains the suite of tools aimed to reverse the system by analyzing the structure for both hardware and software. Okay, there are many interesting tools here in this menu. For example, we have um, NASM. So NASM is a network-wide assembler tool, Binwalk, firmware analysis, and also we have FLASM. Now, FLASM is a command line assembler or disassembler of Flash action script. Radar2 is a general uh, disassembler, debugger, and tool used for reverse engineering. In general, Radar2 is actually the go-to most of the time in reverse engineering. Okay, now let's talk about social engineering. All right, social engineering is a science by itself. It's not only um, a category in a system designed for pen testing and security analysis. So social engineering is based on a non-technical method to intrude systems based on human interactions. It's your ability to manipulate the person and obtain uh, sensitive information or obtain their access credentials or the information that can introduce you to use uh, such parameters. So for example, let's talk about the tools under this category. We have honeypots and we have toolkits. Toolkit SEO, S ah, set toolkit and we have honeypots. So under honeypots we have spot which is small honeypot to trap the attackers. It's actually um, a tiny honeypot, not that big, to set simple environments and fake services in order to trick attackers into actually penetrating the honeypot. And once they enter the honeypot, you analyze their behavior and you see what they want. Um, so we have here the set toolkit or the set. Set is the general framework in social engineering. It's actually known as social engineering toolkit designed to perform attacks against the human interaction. Okay. What else we have? Stress testing. So stress testing, um, the menu here contains only one item, which is for denial of service. We have siege and we have slow HTTP test. So what's stress testing, by the way? Stress testing is the action where a massive amount of traffic or requests, for example, HTTP requests or FTP requests or even ICMP requests performed against a target machine to create a heavy load on the machine in order to make the machine uh, unable to handle the load anymore. So in stress testing, we forward a huge number of uh, packets, ICMP could be any other protocol to test the ability of the machine to handle this load. So basically, in this case, a target server could be under server stress and can be taken advantage of. For instance, the running services such as the web server or database or even application server can also be subjected to stress testing in order to be taken down or to test its ability to handle the stress. So what are the tools we have here? We have Siege and Slow HTTP Test. Now, Siege is an HTTP regression testing used for stress testing our specific server by forwarding HTTP packets. Slow HTTP test is a highly configurable tool. It can be used to simulate application layer denial of service attacks. Okay then guys, so what do we have else? We have automotive analysis and we have forensic analysis, malware analysis. Let's talk a bit about forensic analysis in here. So under forensic, we have Acquisition, data recovery, disk analysis, file analysis, forensic suits, and secure deletion. Under acquisition, we have certain tools such as DCFLDD. Uh, this tool is enhanced version of the DD in Linux. If you know DD, which is tool for imaging systems in Linux, this one is enhanced version of DD with features useful for forensics and security. Okay, so DDR Rescue. 
TT Rescue is a data recovery tool. Um, to recover files, it actually attempts to recover data from one file or block device. GUI Manager. This one is not a command line tool. It's a fast and user friendly forensic imager based on LibFWF. So, where is LibWF here? Let's let's see where it is. I don't think we have it, but this one actually is a GUI Manager used for you know imaging systems, much like DD or DC. FLDD, but it's actually GUI too. Okay, data recovery now. Foremost, now foremost is also command line tool helps you recover files based on their headers, footers, and internal data structures. Photo recovery the same as foremost, but recover photos. This one is for recycle bins, recovering items in the recycle bin, and this one, Scalpel. This is actually Carver tool, designed to recover deleted data from the file system, and the same with test disk. Data recovery, acquisition, and then we have disk analysis. We have X mount, file analysis. We have Galetta, Pasco, Stick Hide. Now, Stick Hide is an interesting tool here, guys used for, it's actually a significant program, it's able to hide data in image and audio files. Very interesting. Vineto, Vineto is application that extracts um, application data, let's say, from internet traffic capture. If you actually use the sniffing tools to capture internet traffic, you can then use Vineto to extract application data from the traffic captures. Forensic suits, autopsy, oh my goodness, I think you know what's autopsy. It's a general forensic framework used for everything, imaging, analysis, whatever you, whatever you want, recovery. Secure delete. So under this one, we have several tools to perform secure deletion so that the files are not re uh, recoverable anymore. That is in forensic analysis. Now, what else we have? Malware analysis. Also, we have mobile. You know what's malware analysis, right? Method to you know it's process for analyzing malware. It's much most most of the time it's connected with the reverse engineering. Sometimes you cannot actually analyze malware statically. You need to use uh, reverse engineering methods to actually see what the file does from the source code perspective. So these two categories are somewhat connected: malware analysis and reverse engineering. Meaning that sometimes you need reverse engineering skills to analyze malware. Mobile analysis, VoIP analysis. Let's just go over this. So, wireless analysis, we've got two categories here, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. In this course, we're going to go over the Wi-Fi analysis section. We're going to actually go over the cracking and the scanning of Wi-Fi networks. The first and foremost tool used in uh, Wi-Fi analysis is AirCrackNG. It's a network software, suit actually, consisting of detector, a packet sniffer, whatever you want for all protocols, WEP, WPA, WPA2, PSK cracker, and also can be used as analysis tool for 202.11 wireless LANs. So in this course, we're going to rely on this tool most of the time. Bully, Pixwebs, Reaver. Reaver also brute force attack against WPS. Reaver um, can the as application used to perform brute force attack against Wi-Fi protected setup. If your router uh, supports WPS, you can use Reaver to perform analysis of attacks. Wi-Fi automated wireless auditing tool, and let's see the scanning. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi scanning, Kismet. So Kismet is 802.11 layer two wireless network identifier and passive data package collector. Sometimes we use Kismet in or along with Aircrack NG to actually gather more information and to make the attack more successful. Okay, miscellaneous, what do we have here? Let's see. HPing. HPing is really similar to N, uh, Nmap, by the way, but HPing is actually active network smashing tool. It's used for smashing. Uh, Nping, Scappy, and also we have DHC, IPv6. The last one is complete set actually a complete tool set to attack the uh, inherent weakness in the ipv6 and icmpv6 and includes easy to use packet factory library um scappy network sniffer 
NPing, similar to HPing, tool for network packet generation and response analysis. So that is for most of the tools that we will go over in this course. And that was an introduction, guys, to the tools used in Backbox. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and I will definitely see you in the next tutorial.